For this space camp adventure, we return to the historic island of Anglesey. An island decorated with miles of dramatic cliffs and rugged coastline. Posing a continuous threat to passing vessels, Anglesey is dotted with the splendid architecture of beautiful lighthouses. A land of magnificent sunsets and a gigantic resource of bird life. Complemented with over 140 miles of the finest coastal paths in all of Wales, passing through isolated coves and sandy beaches. Join us as we explore the western flanks of this incredible Welsh island. For this trip, we are staying on the western tip of Anglesey. Pitched up at Gorsgoch Farm CL on Holy Island, a land earning its title from the high concentration of standing stones, ancient burial chambers and other religious sites. This remote five pitch certified location enjoys uninterrupted views of the Irish Sea with the backdrop of one of the most iconic images of Anglesey, the South Stack Lighthouse. This CL is very informal, with no check-in and an open gate. Visitors literally arrive, drive through the gate and find a free pitch. Once I'd chosen my pitch, it was a simple case of using the motor mover to position the base camp with clear views of the Irish Sea. So here we are on our pitch, the Caravan and Motorhome Club CL, Goss Goss Farm, on the western tip of Anglesey. On a hard standing pitch, but it's not my usual fully serviced. So I've sacrificed the fully serviced for the location. It's all the usual setup. So I've got my hitch cover, obviously Acarol, which I've already filled with water. Got my normal wheel lock on. Obviously got the gray water tank. I haven't used that for a while. And underneath that, I'm using the collapse draining system. I just think that's so much tidier. Um, than just having a pipe sticking out. So I've got the collapse system in. For the awning, there is only one awning that can um, can tolerate this kind of exposed area, and that's the, the usual camper, the Metic 200. I've got the storm straps on it. I've even got some stones that were in a stone pile in the corner of the field, which I'm using to uh, support the awning to the ground, hold the pegs down, I'll put them back when we leave. So that isn't gonna go anywhere. And if we come inside the awning, I've got the usual carpet down. But I've also brought with me these uh, water weights. They weigh seven kilos each. Packable, they pack down, but I filled them at home and brought them with me. So they're adding extra support. And then in the, in the roof section, I've just put a plastic wire tie between these two poles here because they can tend to rattle about when it's windy. And it is going to be windy this evening. So all the usual setup, let's go inside look so i've obviously got their dog <laughs> she's been very patient she's waiting for her first walk which we're going to do in a moment all the usual stuff i've just brought some water bottles with me from home this time just to conserve the water in the acarole so and um, brought those that's our view out the window looking straight across to the irish sea and the south stack lighthouse in the distance it's only me and one other person here 
at the moment. What a beautiful, beautiful location. As to be expected on a CL, facilities are basic. In this shed nestled in the corner is the chemical waste and fresh water, which is a stone's throw from my pitch. The five pitches on the site are all level, hard standing with panoramic views. So the plan for this afternoon, I'm a little bit behind schedule uh, getting set up. So the plan is we're going to hike directly from the campsite here um, and to the South Sat Lighthouse. So we're here where that blue dot is and we can get straight on the, the Welsh coast path and there's South Sat Lighthouse right there which we can see out of the front window here. Four mile, 4.5 miles so that'll take us a couple of hours and we'll get back well ahead of nightfall. The dog and I set off directly from the campsite and we are immediately greeted with the rugged, dramatic Anglesey coastline, which soon proves to us why it is worthy of the accolade of the finest coast paths in all of Wales. But it is when we reach our destination that our breath is taken away by the view of the South Stack Lighthouse. The South Stack Lighthouse is built on Unis Loud, a small rocky island just off the edge of Holy Island. The need for a lighthouse on this section of coastline was recognised as far back as 1645. However, construction finally began in 1808. Keepers and their families lived on the island up until the 1930s when concerns for children colonising a dangerous location brought that to an end. It's hard to believe that the bright sweep from this life-saving building is from a single 150 watt light bulb. So we're back at the base camp after a fabulous walk to the South Stat Lighthouse. Don't think we're going to get much out of the dog for the next couple of hours. Look at the view out of the window now. It's all cleared up. Absolutely stunning. As the sun begins to set on our first evening, we experience the power from that simple dignified tower. The beam which reaches 28 nautical miles sweeps the certified location. So it's bedtime, just about to clean my teeth. I think a miracle's happened. The dog, she's on her sleeping bag. Well done, dog. Well, that was a wild night last night. Extremely strong winds. Caravan was bouncing about, but it's looking like it's going to be a lovely day for our day's hiking today. What do you reckon, dog? Okay, it's looking a fantastic day for hiking today. So, the plan is we've got a 9.7 mile hike from the CL here to uh, Triatha Bay. So, there we are where that blue dot is. And that's our destination now. It's a little bit a bit further south than Triatha Bay, but broadly there. Um, that'll take us five, six hours throughout the day. But before we do that, let's get the bacon butties on. Ah, fancy seeing you here, dog. I'm also bringing with me on my hike today the Jet Boyle and my summit to eat 
beef stew and potatoes, my favourite camping food. So on today's hike we'll find a nice quiet little cove, a nice quiet little bay and we'll fire that up and enjoy that for our lunch. So we've just joined the coast path from the CL. I've extended the route to 14 miles. It's such a perfect day for walking. We may as well just spend all day. So this is the start point. The coastal paths along the Isle of Anglesey fall within an area of outstanding natural beauty. Walking has to be the best way to experience the Welsh coastline taking the explorer over impressive cliff tops and across the most beautiful of beaches. Along our route we discover spectacular hidden coves and shale beaches, some of which only reveal their secrets at low tide. As we place our footsteps on these golden sands, it's hard to comprehend such tremendous settings. With weary legs and hunger in our bellies, the dog and I find that quiet cove we were looking for to enjoy our lunch. When we reach the end of our journey, we are greeted with a landscape that would not look out of place in Norway. So we're back at the caravan. That was a, just a, beautiful walk along the west coast of Angles here or the west coast of Holy Island should I say the dog is absolutely worn out <laughs> I don't think I'll get much out of it for the rest of today there's a couple of other caravans turned up since we've been out one on that side and someone else has taken the pitch at the far end over there so the plan for this evening should be a nice sunset in a bit so I'm going to chill out now, I'm going to enjoy that sunset. And then I'm going to cook up some pasta tonight. So I've got some pasta there. I think I've got a tin of tomatoes in the tin store here. Yeah, at the front. Yeah. A tin of tomatoes. I've got some ingredients in the fridge. I'll cook up some uh, sauce, pasta sauce. And then the dog will sleep through another film. And then we're off hiking again tomorrow. Well, that was another breezy night in the base camp. Dog snored like a trooper though, didn't you, darling? Before we do anything, we're going to have to wait for this front to pass through. Hard to believe the change in the weather. It's like I've time warped into a different season compared to yesterday. So the plan for today, our last full day on the island. So we're heading over to Hollyhead Mountain, which is a couple of miles from here. There's a car park there, which is there. And we're going to hike from that car park to North Stack, 
which is a Foghorn station. So there was South Stack where we were the other day. There's North Stack. I'm going to go back along the headline and then head to um, Hollyhead Breakwater Lighthouse, which is at the end of this seawall, which is about a mile long. So it's a seven mile round trip. The winds are quite wild today. So um, I was hoping to get the drone up to film some of these historic locations, but I'm not sure I'll be able to. But I'm sure it will be a fascinating walk still. The hike to North Stack Fog Signal Station offers astonishingly beautiful views of Anglesey's rugged coastline. Following the good quality footpaths around Hollyhead Mountain, we soon gain enough elevation to clearly see our second destination on this walk, the Hollyhead Breakwater snaking out to sea. The former Fog Signal Station, located on the headland, was constructed in 1780. It was originally equipped with a cannon and the magazine house was built later in 1861. The accommodation block it was home to the keepers and their families. Constructed perilously close to the gigantic cliffs, it truly is an awe-inspiring sight. Complemented with the backdrop of the forever angry Irish Sea. As we carefully navigate our way to the front of the signal station, we discover a small rocky island. The delightful sound of the seabirds is almost deafening and makes a beautiful backdrop for our lunch. Retracing our footsteps down Hollyhead Mountain, we rejoin the mainland and head towards the Hollyhead Breakwater. The Hollyhead Breakwater was constructed over 150 years ago and stretches out some one and a half miles out to sea. Work started on the structure in 1846 However, it wasn't opened until 1873 due to the construction being such a mammoth undertaking. In total, the structure took 7 million tonnes of rock to build and tragically cost the lives of 40 men. The Breakwater Lighthouse is an impressive structure all by itself. Standing three storeys high and over 70 feet tall, it's unlike most lighthouses on the island being that it is square in shape and not round. So, we just got back from our hike. Just beat this little weather front that came through. Just got back before it started raining. What another spectacular hike. And once again, the dog is knackered. We're both absolutely shattered. Heading home early in the morning. So the plan for this evening is going to be similar to last night. So in the fridge, I've got three beers left. So it'd be rude not to put some veg in there. And um, I've got a casserole. That's what we're going to make for dinner. In fact, I've only just twigged. And instead of buying the... Um, Ready meals, I've started to buy the tin version, use less gas. It's only take me two years to work that out. So we're gonna have a casserole with some veg for tonight. And then we're gonna um, relax, watch a film, and then get packed up, ready for an early depart in the morning.
as the sun begins to set upon our final evening at Gorskov Farm, my reflections turn to this unique camping experience. Delivering as close to a wild camping escapade as one could expect with a caravan, certified locations will play a large role moving forward due to their bespoke locations, tranquil ambience and informal character. The base camp caravan continues to be the enabler for these said adventures, for everything it has been designed to be a true base camp. The captivating and enchanting sunrise is the perfect close for this adventure, albeit a distraction from the job of packing away. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next adventure very soon.